Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the DigitalAudioManual.com. We are continuing to look at the ShaperBox envelope follower, and today we are focusing on this Add and Multiply section. But before we start, I want to remind you that there's a link below to the free content navigation guide, which is an easy-to-navigate web page with links to all the content on this channel. And besides that, in the near future, I'm going to begin adding tips and other bits of information that will only be available there. You know, things like simple steps that will get you started and up and running quick. Things that are in the videos, but are written down in simple steps that serve as quick reminders when you need information down the road. If you're working with programs like WaveLab or Cubase Plugin, or the Cable Guys Shaper Box 2 and many, many other projects that are in the works, then I know you're going to find, just like I have, that this is an invaluable study aid. And the other thing I want to make sure you understand is that this is not a simple PDF. This is a constantly updated page that has any information that uh, is new or anytime videos are changed, really anything updated. And once you have it, you will always have the latest information constantly updated. So if you haven't gotten it already, go to the link below, click on it, and save it to your favorites. It's my gift to you, and it's absolutely free. Okay, so let's get started. So, what does the Add and Multiply do? That's a good question. Let's look at some things just to start beginning to have a concept of what's happening. Um, let's start with the add. Let's play this drum loop. And when we're dealing with the add, notice that the LFO, which is this line right here, I'm going to lower it and I'm going to raise it. The cutoff on the LFO. Notice that the trace is always slightly above the line, okay? If I bring this down a little bit, it's still right there. If I bring it down a little bit more, it's still right there. If I take it way up to the top, it's kind of slamming against the roof here, but so it's limited, but it's still right there. It's always relatively the same no matter where I move this cutoff. And that's the concept of add, because what it's doing is it's adding this trace onto this LFO. So no matter where I move it, it's always there. And of course that it would be affected if we messed it with all this attack, hold, and, bat, and release, and stuff that we've done in previous videos. But we're not gonna mess with that one, now we're just gonna leave it. But just moving the LFO cutoff, we always see this trace in the same relative way. That's kind of what the ad is about. There's a few other things to understand, but that's mainly it. Now, when I go over here and I hit multiply, everything stays the same here. All the, you know, attack, hold, release, and everything. But notice, when I take this LFO cutoff to the top, the trace is drawing over the wave in the background, see there, I got my drum wave in the back and this trace is drawing over it and it's covering the whole thing, right? As I bring this down, maybe a little bit halfway, notice that little trace has also go down, gone down halfway. Whereas the, in the add, it always stayed above it and always stayed in the same relative way. But as I lower this down, I keep shrinking the trace line. That's the key concept, or at least one of the key concepts, of the difference between this add and the multiply. The add does just that. It only just takes whatever, you know, whatever your LFO is. I'm just using a straight line, but whatever it is, it always just adds the trace line, you know, in some relative form above it and keeps it that way. Whereas the multiply is directly affected by where this line goes. If I raise this line up, the trace line goes up. If I raise this line down, the trace line goes down. So that's the beginning of understanding the difference between this add and multiply concept. And of course, the other thing, and I've mentioned this a couple of times in the other videos, you, uh, with, especially with this plugin, you want to watch your gain staging. You want to make sure you got a level here. Um, you're just not going to get the same results if your levels are off, um, and especially in terms of this filter. Uh, let me show you one thing here. I'm going to bring up the uh, bringing up the drum channel here, and I, I have this uh, pre-gain that I've got for the drum channel just to show you the difference. Let me turn this up for a minute. 
And I, again, I've talked about this a few times, but you know, you see the gray oscillator the picture of the drum in the back. As I turn my pregain down, see how I've got just a little bit of, of a drum beat there? That really makes a big difference on this particular filter, you know, shaper in terms of how it's going to react. So just, you know, save yourself a lot of grief. Just when you're using this thing, make sure you got a decent amount of gain. Um, try not to have it slammed right against the roof. That'll affect it maybe in a way you're not really happy with either. But make sure the thing fills the screen. You know, if you don't, then find a way to bring your level up on whatever track you're working with. And then there, you will see, um, you know, some real results when you start moving things around. Okay, so now, getting a little deeper with this. So we have, again, my drum wave there, the gray marks in the back. Let me turn this LFO up so we can hear it. And we're dealing with the multiply. So as I bring this LFO cutoff envelope up, Again, the trace increases, right? Okay, so if I do something like this, where I bring this down, let me put another point here, and I ramp it. So I'm gonna ramp this side up. In essence, what it's doing now is it's starting off, see how the trace is low, even though the, the drum wave is this gray part right here, it's tall, but it's only being drawn down here in the very bottom of it, right? But as it moves along, it draws a little bit higher, a little bit higher, and ultimately it draws it all the way to the top of the of the drum, you know, gray mark here. So the LFO here, when you're in multiply mode, it's all it's increasing this. You know, how it's increasing, how it's hitting right on the drum itself. And the LFO is causing it to do that. I know it's confusing, but what the, the difference again, the difference between the add the um, add mode. I'm not going to change all this around, but in the in the add mode, uh, I try to do it with my mouse here. You would see the little heartbeat stay right consistently with the line, right? It would be riding right up the line here. That's how it works in the add mode because what it's doing is it's taking the LFO and it's adding your little trace right to it. So wherever your line is, and then you add something to it. Whereas on the multiply mode, it you know it draws it on the it draws that little trace line. But as this ramps up, instead of it just kind of riding the ramp up, what it does is it follows more on the drum, but increases how much of the drum itself it's drawing on. Now, if that hasn't totally confused you, I know. But, you know, if you play this video about a thousand times, that'll probably sink in because that's kind of how I had to do it. I had to go over that concept a, a whole bunch of times before that started to, like, you know, sink into my brain. But um, that's what's the you know main difference on this add and multiply. The add... Is just riding the, the LFO wherever it goes, and the multiply is affected by the LFO on the actual drum sound. So let's look at it one more time, see if I can try to cement this in your head so it makes some kind of sense. So look, all the way up, the trace bar, the trace line is riding completely over, it's, in other words, it's completely drawing over the gray of the drum, right? It's, it's right with it. Wherever the gray of the drum is, so goes the trace line, right with it. And as I bring this down, now it's only drawing it over a part of the drum line until this LFO line rises up and allows it to actually start to draw it over the top. Let me see what happens. I could go to back to add and see if we can just see it. Well, there you go. Okay, it did it. I was worried that it, because of my settings, I might get something different. But notice how, look, now the trace line is just riding up the, it's like, like a little, uh, roller coaster going to the top before it comes down right just riding it up to the top has doesn't make it any difference that i ramp this up as far as down here on the drum it's just riding this up but on the multiply it pays more attention to the actual drum itself and it rises up in relation to the drum as this lfo goes up i hope i have not just completely confused you <laughs> <laughs> but I know eventually, if you if you think about this, it will start to make sense. Okay, so then I just want to share. This is kind of fun, you know. It's um, not really mentioned in the manual, but um, it's an interesting thing that to understand that you can do. Because again, this add multiply produces drastic results. You know, in terms of a uh, drastic different results. You know, when you use the add button, you're going to get one sound, and when you use the multiply, you're going to get something else. For example. Right now I have the add on with these settings. And if I click over to multiply, 
it changes to that. The uh, envelope of the drum, the louder drum hits, is now really making the the change in how it sounds. Back to the add sound. And that's more the envelope affecting it. So what's fun is that, guess what? You can uh, automate these. So watch, in rhythm... Right, so by hitting the read or write button, the write button, and hitting these, you can draw like I've done right here in automation lane, which controls it. I turn my read off. So there you go. So not only can you use it to draw the different effects, you can then automate the difference between the two of them. Just keeps getting better, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, so there you go. So there's some looking and analyzing at that add multiply. I mean, you know, we could endlessly come up with examples, but you get the idea that there's a difference between the two and somewhat of how to uh, interpret the results. So. All right, as always, if you haven't picked up your navigation guide, be sure to grab that. That's your new online manual. It's going to save you a lot of time. It saves me a lot of time. I use the thing all the time. And whether you use it today or six months from today, it's something you want to just have and keep in your favorites. So click that link below and download it. And uh, see you next time.